Before we get started, I'd like to welcome our Chief Rich Austin to lead us in invocation. I don't think that's on. Hello. Let us pray together. Oh, gracious Lord, thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us. Thank you also for those here in attendance, whether they be decision makers, staff members, or citizens, Father. Let us all work together for the greater good of this city. Please guide us, give us wisdom, give us courage, and help us as we work together for the good of all. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chief Austin. Good evening, everyone. I'd like, to, I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Milton City Council for Monday, July 9th, 2018, to order. City, if you'll please call the roll and make general announcements. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'll be happy to call the roll for the July 9th, 2018, regular meeting. I would like to remind those in attendance to please silence all cell phones at this time. Those attending the meeting who would like to provide public comment, you are required to complete a public comment card prior to speaking on the item. Those called to speak will be taken in the order that the speaker cards are received by the city clerk prior to the beginning of tonight's meeting. All speakers will please identify themselves by name, address, and organization. The city council may allow public comment on either an agenda item or general public comment from a representative of an organized group or association, provided the individual has filed a notarized affidavit with the city clerk that they have the authority to speak on behalf of the organization prior to the agenda item being called. Demonstration of any sort within the chamber is prohibited, so please refrain from any applause, cheering, booing, outbursts, or dialogue with any person speaking. Anyone in violation will be asked to leave. As I call roll this evening, please confirm your attendance. Mayor Joe Lockwood. Here. Council Member Peyton Jamison. Here. Council Member Matt Kuntz. Here. Council Member Laura Bentley. Here. Council Member Joe Longoria. Here. Council Member Rick Morick. Here. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And again, I want to welcome everybody for being here tonight. And, Sudi, I'm going to ask you to sound the next item, which is the approval of the meeting agenda. This item is the approval of the meeting agenda, agenda item number 18194. Okay, and I would like to add an executive session to discuss land acquisition. And also, I believe staff wants to add uh, an item for uh, approval on the agenda. The uh, consideration of adoption of a joint defense agreement regarding pending tax appeal litigation. We know they can put that. Business. New business, yeah. We will make it a, a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. All right, I have a motion from Councilmember Coot, second from Councilmember Morig as for approval of the agenda, the meeting agenda as amended. All in favor, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> That's unanimous, City. Do we have any public comment, general public comment? Yes, sir, we do have two. Okay, next item is general public comment. Public comment is a time for citizens to share information with the mayor and city council and to provide input and opinions on any matter that is not scheduled for its own public hearing during today's meeting. Each citizen who chooses to participate in public comment must complete a comment card and submit it to the city clerk. Please remember this is not a time to engage the mayor or members of city council in conversation. When your name is called, please step forward and speak into the microphone stating your name and address for the record. And you'll have five minutes for remarks. So if you please call the first speaker. Our first speaker is Mr. Tim Becker. Good evening, Council. I am speaking tonight regarding the traffic situation at Birmingham Crossroads. My understanding is that the capital improvement element to be considered tonight does not include mention of the crossroads intersection. Simply stated, rush hour traffic into the crossroads is a nightmare and it's getting worse. 
The hours of gridlock are 6.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. But these periods are expanding. Cut-throughs are well-known and well-used. In May of 2007, I addressed Council on the cut-through traffic on the northeast corner. I conducted a poor man's traffic study of traffic going west and then north. I found that around 72 hour, or cars per hour cut through the northeast corner. Compare this to the 210 westbound cars that make a right turn at the crossroads intersection. This means that over 25% of westbound traffic that proceeds north at the crossroads is cut through traffic. Making matters worse, these cut through drivers are generally more reckless than drivers for whom the northeast corner is a destination. Cut through drivers are more likely to be traveling at a high rate of speed, to disregard the stop signs, and to zigzag through the complex. So the gridlock, gridlock at the crossroads is not just an inconvenience for local residents, it is a safety issue. Please make implementation of a crossroads traffic solution a priority. Thank you for your service. Okay, thank you. Sudi, if you'd please call the next speaker. The next speaker is, I'm going to read a comment. I have um, in possession of an affidavit authorizing reading of this public comment. It is by Judy Birds, who resides at 1165 Bream Drive, Milton, Georgia. She states, in reviewing the Capital Improvements Element, CIE, 2018 Annual Update Draft of July 9th, 2018, I noted that many intersections less congested than Birmingham Highway and Birmingham Road had capital earmarked for improvements on page 10. This included other intersections that also involved planning with GDOT. I am looking to you to assure that any needed funds in the coming five years for the Birmingham Crossroads are projected in the 2018 CIE updated annual plan. Best regards, Judy Birds. And that's all, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, let's move on to the consent agenda. So if you'll please <clears throat> sound the item. This item is approval of the financial statements and investment report for the period ending May 2018. Agenda item number 18195. Next is approval of a construction services agreement between the City of Milton, Georgia and Superior Fence of Georgia, LLC for a City Hall fence. Agenda item number 18196. Our third and final consent agenda item is approval of a change order number one to the professional services agreement between the City of Milton and Barge Design Solutions, Inc. for an update to the citywide parks and recreation master plan and the master plan for Providence Park. Agenda item number 18197. Okay, I have a motion on the consent agenda. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda as read. Second. Chair, okay, I have a motion from Councilmember Bentley, and I believe from a second from Councilmember Kuntz um, that I heard first. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. All right, if we can move on to reports and presentations. Sudi, if you'll please call the item. <laughs> Tonight, we have a proclamation recognizing MDA, City of Milton, Firefighter Appreciation. This is being presented by Mayor Joe Lockwood. Okay, thank you. The Muscular Dystrophy Association's proprietary Fill the Boot program is supported by the fire departments across North America. This simple street-side collection campaign provides an easy and convenient mechanism for commuting Americans to make a contribution to one of America's most beloved charities by America's most beloved heroes, the firefighters. This year marks 64 years for this American tradition. Since 1954, firefighters have raised 558 million for MDA. Over the last 12 years, the City of Milton Fire Department has collected over $726,000 from generous citizens for local children and adults living with muscular dystrophy, ALS, and related life-threatening diseases with approximately 2,400 patients registered in the greater Atlanta area. 
The support of the fire department hits close to home. In 2017, the department raised $79,348, which was the highest in the metro area, metro Atlanta area, and the second largest in the state of Georgia. During the 2018 campaign, the city of Milton raised a record-breaking $87,075. The public service resulting from this labor of love is nothing short of incredible. Tonight, we're fortunate to have Ab Abney Ruffner, Executive Director of MDA Atlanta, and she's excited to support the department year after year and is here with us in the audience along with the MDA Ambassador families, Kyle El Eggleston and his family, Hannah and Austin Stacks and their family, and Holly Sorrells. Also, please wel welcome Chief Bob Edgar and members of the City, Mil City of Milton Fire Department. And after I read this pro proclamation, I'd like to ask everybody to step forward uh, to receive them. So I have before me here a proclamation, the MDA City of Milton Firefighter Appreciation. Whereas dedicated and selfless firefighters in Milton provide vital and life-saving services to the citizens of their community, and whereas at a moment's notice, these men and women risk their lives subduing fires and rescuing those trapped in infernos, as well as saving citizens from emergencies that could have been deadly situations, and whereas Georgia firefighters contribute significantly to the continued well-being of Georgians throughout their outstanding commitment to community service. Their sense of duty and responsibility is evidenced by their hundreds of volunteer hours and annual boot drives to collect funds to fight muscular dystrophy. And whereas, firefighters in the city of Milton unselfishly donate their time and energy to support the Muscular Dystrophy Association, raising more than $726,000 over our 12-year partnership. And whereas many of Milton's most deserving citizens have benefited from the funds raised by firefighters in the Fill the Boot campaign. And these public servants make invaluable con contributions to our community in all of the tasks they perform. Now, therefore, we, the mayor and the city council of the city of Milton, hereby proclaim April through September as MDA Fire Firefighter Appreciation time in the city of Milton and encourage all citizens of Milton, Georgia to recognize and support the efforts of these firefighters on behalf of MDA. And this is given under my hand and the seal of the city of Milton, Georgia on the ninth day of July, 2018. And with that, I'd like to ask everyone involved to step forward along with the council for a presentation. <laughs> Members, would you mind if I asked Fire to go up around, or would you all prefer to go up and stand? Uh, up, 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 up. Yes, I didn't realize you had such a large radio. Yeah. I misjudged. Well, we're going to have to shake some hands. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Mingle, and then I will take the photo. <laughs> My apologies, I misjudged the size of the <laughs> Okay, Council, if you will go, if you'll go back up. Sorry. Yes, let's do that. That way I can get a really good facial. Yes, do you mind? I'm sorry, I misjudged the size of the group. That's my fault. My apologies. <laughs> She took one look at your awesome. knees, Rick, and she said, stop it. I'm not taking this person. Council, if you will stand in front of your chair, put your chair behind you. It's perfect. And then tighten, tighten up behind. There you go. Okay. 
keep if you'll hold the proclamation with seal at the bottom. No, you can keep it closed, but if you'll hold it, don't seal at the bottom. Perfect. You guys in the audience all know this from Christmas pictures, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm earning my keep here. Okay, all right, we're looking right here. Give me just one second. Perfect, great. One, two, three. Let's do one more. One, two, three. Hold them right there, don't move. Let's do one more. Okay. One here, one. Two, three. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for your service. Thanks Thanks for your I also want to thank, you know, again, thank our firefighters for taking their, volunteering their time to raise money for such a good cause to help out deserving <coughs> folks, um, as well as our citizens who uh, generously give it, uh, it put money in the boot so thank you very much it's quite an honor <coughs> all right city, city will you please sound the final report and presentation item this item is discussion of the capital improvement element CIE and the draft transmittal resolution Ms. Michelle McIntosh Ross and Mr. Bill Ross of Ross and Associates. Okay, thank you. Greetings. Uh, I'm Michelle McIntosh Ross, and I'm here to introduce uh, Bill Ross with Ross and Associates. Um, he's our consultant for the capital improvement element, also known as the CIE, and our impact fee consultant. Um, uh, who, he will uh, brief you on the 2018 CIE document, uh, the state requirements, and answer any questions that you may have. There he is. Hello again. This is getting to be a regular annual thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, this is the annual report that's required by the state mm -hmm. for any community that has impact fees. Uh, basically, the report is what money did you take in, what did you do with it, how much you got left, and where are you with regard to the projects that were that were scheduled? Uh, as a general statement, you're doing just great. You've got a fantastic finance director. You've got a fantastic planning department. I I, I should be paying you, not you me. I'm not too sure. Um, I would like to say this: now that your next at your regular meeting, you'll be having a public hearing. <clears throat> because the state requires that you have a public hearing on this this annual report before you send it in for DCA review and then you wait for them to, to respond. I would like to mention this. Um, the annual report is based entirely on the last community uh, a capital improvements element, the CIE. And uh, you adopted uh, the last CIE, I think it was 2015, Michelle, was it 2015? It was a few years ago. 2016, yeah. And so the report uh, can only be based in the, on the projects in the last approved CIE. We have already had discussions, or staff has had discussions with us, about updating that CIE next year. Because, as you've already heard earlier uh, in this meeting, there are other projects that are coming forward. There are other projects that citizens are, are interested in. So it won't affect the, the annual report this year, but I would encourage anyone who has concerns about intersections or streets or whatever to get it into the staff in writing so that when they update the whole capital improvements element, and I think next year is on is 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 in sight that those projects are considered for inclusion meanwhile we can't add new projects to this because it's just an update report uh, to let the state know what you get what you do with it how much you got left what projects have been completed or are still um, on schedule for uh, uh, for improvement is there any questions um, I, I have some. Um, so we had a couple 
co public comments on um, the Birmingham Crossroads, which I just wanted to ask why that wasn't included in the first round. I know this, I understand that this is an update, but is it, um, could you just explain that? Right, that was a project that was intended to be funded by GDOT. So our capital improvement element and our original capital improvement program represents projects where the city has um, a funding portion of that. Um, and at that time, the intersection improvements were a project that was going to be a straight GDOT project, so it wasn't in that original capital improvement element. And at this point, as far as we know, it is still a GDOT project. Okay, and we're still waiting for that update. Um, Correct. Okay. Um, I had a question about State Route 9 and Bethany Bend. Um, there was a small amount in there, $173,000. Um, is that to complement the wide, widening of the... Of we have a project to do some intersection improvements, um, some safety improvements that would hold us over until the widening project. Um, we've been working with GDOT on that also, so they've been going through with some of their contractors to try and get that scheduled. But there are some minor striping and signal changes that we had proposed to them to improve the operation of that intersection until the widening came in. So that's what that represents. Okay. Um, I just had a question about also the, um, I saw in here that the Chadwick landfill was part of the parks and um, uh, that was one that we had uh, selected monies or um, uh, f fees to go towards. And is there, could we get an update on that? The fees that those went to originally, we knew that uh, the park at some, or the um, landfill at some point would reach its capacity. And there was an opportunity for the city to um, participate or have some sort of park component at that location. Um, and so the original capital improvement program tried to recognize some money going towards that project, although there wasn't a specific project identified at that time. Um, we're continuing to work with waste management on um, what goes on at the, at the site, as well as what the life of the site is. Um, and so those, that funding, I don't know if it has carried over over the years from the initial capital improvement element, um, but that would represent some opportunity that may exist at the site, but has not yet been specifically identified. It's been carrying over as a placeholder. Okay, right. But Steve, is there any update on timing on that? We met with waste management recently. They're still, uh, uh, according to the state, they're still scheduled potentially for a uh, June June 19. I think that's right. Um, closure, but um, you know, I don't know what, what whether us creating a park there is a reality or not. Um, we just had some basic conversations. I know that quite some time ago you had some serious discussions with them, but I think that they are going to be seeking other uses of the property as well. So uh, I, think, uh, I think that remains to be seen. Okay. Right. okay. Anything else from Bill or Michelle? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. All right, Sudi, next item's first presentation. If you'll please sound the item. This item is consideration of an ordinance to revise the alcohol code to allow Sunday sales by the drink between 11 a.m. and 12.30 p.m., conditional upon voter approval, to repeal ordinances in conflict and set an effective date. Agenda item number 18-198. Okay, do I have a motion? The first presentation item? We'll make a motion that we approve the first presentation item as read. Second. Okay, I have a motion from Councilmember Kuntz and I believe a second from Councilmember Longoria. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. <clears throat> okay, tonight we have no items under public hearing or our zoning agenda, so we'll move on to unfinished business. City, if you'll please sound that item. This item is consideration of an ordinance to revise noise restrictions impacting the use of consumer fireworks to repeal ordinances in conflict and set an effective date. Agenda item number 18190. First presentation was heard at the June 18th regular city council meeting. Chief Rich Austin. Good evening, Mayor, members of council. Uh, stated this was presented back on June 18th. Uh, primary purpose of the ordinance revision is to bring us in alignment with the duly enacted 
state law. Uh, this will allow our officers to have the authority to take enforcement action on the targets or be allowed reasonable uh, outside the dates and times otherwise protected by the state law. Okay, are there any questions? Matt? Yeah, um, Obviously, there's the law itself, but then the enforcement of it. And so I've got some questions from some residents. If they hear fireworks, it's hard to tell where they are exactly, um, but they're loud enough they can hear them over a certain, especially in my area where you can have them in Cherokee and not even know, you know not know if they're there or in Fulton or in Milton or whatever. So um, the, the question is, is how would they go about enforcing that? Just call 911 and call you. Is that the right call answer? Or the non-emergency line. Right. Sometimes we have multiple calls on those, which makes it a little easier for us to find them. Okay. So that may help us perhaps try and get a little bit of information. Sure. Sure. So I do encourage citizens to do that, and we will check them out. Okay. Thanks. Have you noticed just any difference between this year, currently, this last week, versus in the past? I do know uh, the third and the fourth were both open days, according to the new state law. We had uh, nine calls total. Uh, eight were within the uh, parameters, only one outside. Any other questions? Rick? Just a comment. Um, on the, the, the fourth, mm -hmm. I was driving to downtown Alpharetta, coming back into Milton, and it, it looked like the streets were totally filled with smoke. But I noticed when I got to our subdivision, where I live, I was just pulling in. You did have a police officer there. There was a group of people actually doing fireworks in a cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. And I think it helped having an officer at least around if there was any issue and it helped with traffic control. So I just wanted to appreciate, say appreciate you guys just stopping in and being aware and taking care of that. Great, thank you. Okay, Laura. I have a question about um, the vendors that come to Milton to um, set up shop temporarily to sell fireworks. So is that a permit that they should, they should have and we check that? Yes, they, they do have to be permitted. Uh, we actually che checked out one recently. And, and are those are those for just consumer fireworks, or I'm assuming you can't get commercial grade fireworks on the street? This, okay. I don't know if sure I can get that information for you. So, okay, my question is that I, you know, what I'm hearing, I, I it sounds pretty big, <laughs> right. yeah. and that was last night. So, um, I, I just would like to have that conversation about. Um, you know, the consumer versus the commercial grade. Um, when we do have commercial grade fireworks shows, I think it would be um, good to, you know, I'm assuming that requires some sort of permit. If it does require a permit, then it would be great through our communications department to let our residents know since we do have such, you know, we have farms here. Um, that's just a suggestion. Um, and then I just wanted to thank, and I don't want to steal um, Shannon's thunder, but <clears throat> we had quite a lively conversation on Facebook over fireworks for the past two weeks, and I appreciate that conversation because um, no matter where you are, and I appreciate a good celebration, but it, I think it was a great opportunity to um, share in the conversation. So, Okay. Yeah, Chief, if you don't mind, maybe get some info to the council on, you know, what the draw, what the line is between commercial and, and consumer fireworks. Certainly we'll do that. Okay, anybody else? Okay. I'll open up uh, for a motion on that item then. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to revise uh, noise restrictions impacting the use of consumer fireworks to repeal ordinances in conflict and set an effective date. Okay, do I have a second? Sorry. All right, I've got a motion from Council Member Bentley for approval with a second by Council Member Morig. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes unanimous, Sudi. Okay, we'll move on to unfinished business. Sudi, if you'll please sound the next item. This item is consideration of a resolution to dissolve the Milton Cultural Arts Committee and to recognize the work of its members. Agenda item number 18199, Ms. Sarah Ladart. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, we're here tonight uh, to discuss and request the dissolution of the Milton Cultural Arts Committee. Um, you guys have it in your executive summary, but in October 2016, we voted to form the Cultural Art Committee with the intent of um, 
to advocate for, promote, and participate in the selection and interpretation of cultural artwork and cultural art events to encourage local exploration, generate civic pride, showcase local artists, and increase tourism for the city of Milton. Um, the committee that, or the, yeah, the committee that you guys brought together has on their own funded the creation of a new 501c3 that will increase their opportunities for grants and the collection of donations. Um, I have Bill Purdy here, our chairman, to talk to you a little bit more about that. But at the end of this, what we're asking is um, that you guys dissolve the Milton Cultural Art Committee and that we formally give our support to the Milton Arts Council. Okay. Well. And I just also clarify for this is a good thing. It's a very good thing. <laughs> it's not, we're not dissolving the no. committee because of we, we, negative things. Not at all. <coughs> we consider this a success. So. Right. Thank you, Sarah. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm Bill Purdy, Chairman of the Milton Cultural Arts Committee. Uh, since my last presentation to Council on January 29th of this year, our committee has continued to try to re refine and define our goals for an arts program in the city of Milton. One of our goals was to create a nonprofit organization capable of raising funds, which was a limitation of the Cultural Arts Committee. So on May 1st of this year, we created the Milton Arts Council, Inc. It's a uh, certified Georgia nonprofit corporation. My role in that corporation is the president at the current time. The board of directors of this corporation consists of the seven council appointed members of the Cultural Arts Committee, plus three other directors. One is an attorney at law who provides pro bono services to us in our corporation, a CPA who provides us with the financial information, uh, advice, and accounting services, and Sarah Ladart as a non-voting director uh, board member, and she will serve as the liaison between our corporation and council. Uh, the Milton Arts Council uh, adopted on our first meeting articles of incorporation and bylaws that will support our federal tax filing as a 501c3 corporation in about one year from now. To date, the uh, council has, our council has conducted uh, two arts programs. Uh, one was the Milton Scott Talent, as the first show when went well. We were going to have the winners perform at the Milton Beach Bash, but apparently there was bad weather and we couldn't do it. But look for them at the Oktoberfest in, uh, on October 6th, uh, the Crab Apple Fest, rather. We, did, we have acquired under our organization the Milton Literary Festival, which is scheduled for November. So at our first meeting, we uh, discussed the parallel goals of the Cultural Arts Committee and the corporation, and they are basically the same. And we continue to pledge our <clears throat> partnership in maintaining visibility and transparency to council of our corporation's activities. So in summary, I have uh, two requests for council. One is that we request the dissolution of the Milton Cultural Arts Committee and your continued support of the Milton Arts Council. That is my presentation. Any questions or comments? Any questions for Bill? Matt? Um, I just want to say congratulations. I Thank think, you. Uh, as, a, as a former president of a 501c3, and Peyton, I believe you were for the uh, Crab Apple Festival, Crab Apple Community Association, it's, um, it's a, a huge labor of love. Um, but this is exactly what we want to see for some of our organizations that can grow and become on their own and actually inspire us, you know, with the ways that you think is most important. I think a lot of times our 501c3s can operate efficiently because you don't have some of the restrictions that we might have here in government as well. So I think that it's a very good thing that you're doing. Um, I think it's best for our community. You can get all the volunteers. Um, so I just look forward to things you're doing. I think it's great you're taking over the uh, Milton Literary Festival mm -hmm. as well. It's a great, yes. yeah. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to see you beat the DeKalb Literary Festival. So it's yeah. a long ways to go, but that's a big area. We have ways to go to grow to that point, yes. <laughs> Exactly, so I just see big things for you. And I just want to say congratulations. And Thank I definitely you. support this. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Bill, and all the rest of your committee members, so. Thank you. All right, thanks. Okay, I'll, uh, if there's no other questions, I'll open up for a motion. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we approve the resolution to dissolve the Milton Cultural Arts Committee, MCAC, and to recognize the work of its members, agenda item number 18-199. Okay, all right, I have a motion from Councilmember Kuntz. 
For approval with a second from uh, Councilmember Longoria. <coughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Okay, this has got to be one of our shortest meetings. In, uh, in history, but uh, any, anything council wants to report on well, tonight? We have one, item, one item to add. Oh, we did add yeah. on. My bad. Okay. And Sudi, if you'd please call the next unfinished business item. This item is consideration of the adoption of a joint defense agreement regarding pending tax appeal litigation. Mr. Ken Gerard. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I have passed out to your station pursuant to an amendment to add to the agenda a joint defense agreement. As the council may be aware, there were two class action lawsuits that were filed against Fulton County and the Fulton County Assessor's Office based upon uh, the countywide assessments uh, conducted by uh, Fulton County challenging at least the valuations done over the last three years. Those lawsuits implicate not only Fulton County, the Assessor's Office, but also every municipality in Fulton County. Needless to say, there is um, a, is this the right word, cacophony of lawyers involved. Um, and in light of that, this is a fairly standard practice. If all of the defendants have a commonality of interests, we're all sort of aiming toward the same target. But because of that, we need, in order for all of our respective conversations to be privileged, we need to enter into a joint defense agreement, which means that all of us can talk amongst each other without waiving the attorney-client privilege. Uh, it allows me to speak to you about information I've learned from other jurisdictions. You all have to keep that information private as well as part of our common litigation defense strategy. I am requesting as part of our defense of the city with respect to this class action lawsuits that the council approve this joint defense agreement that I have passed out to you this evening. Is there any questions for Ken on this? Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll open up for a motion. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor I'd uh, make a recommendation that we approve the joint defense agreement as presented. Second. Okay, I've got a motion for approval from Councilmember Morig with a second from Councilmember Kuntz. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. All right, I'll move on to council. Anything council want to report on before we go to staff reports? Okay, we'll uh, move on to staff reports. I think we got public works first. Do you have anything on there? No, <laughs> no I didn't bring slides, just, just the information here. So a quick update on the TSPLOS program. Um, at this point, we are at about 87% of what uh, was projected that we would bring in on that program. And we're almost a quarter of the way into the, the five-year tax. Um, our TSPLOST batch two projects, um, which were Hopewell Hamby and Hopewell Thompson, those concepts are nearing completion. We've got a public survey out right now. Um, and as of Friday, we had 890 responses already. So that's a very good response. And first question we ask is, are you a resident of the city of Milton? And 825 of those were residents. So uh, we'll be bringing those recommended alternatives forward um, August, September, after, after we finish the public input period. Um, let's see. Then the Northeast Crabapple Project is... Uh, beginning the right-of-way acquisition process and wrapping up final design. Uh, construction projects, we issued a notice to proceed today for the Morris at Webb Road roundabout, and Freemanville at Providence will be coming in the next week or two, that notice to proceed. And then some upcoming construction. We've got two projects that were identified with GDOT as what they call the quick response project, which moves a little faster than their, their typical process. Um, it's been about two years since we had those initial discussions, and by the end of July, GDOT should issue a notice to proceed for um, some left turn lanes on 372 at Batesville and 372 at Green. Right. So that is an update of what's going on. Anybody have any questions for Sarah? Um, um, no for the Bethany's... Uh, Bethany Way, Hope Well, the the time frame for that, we're in, what's it called, review? 
So that was one of the Teeth Floss Batch 1 projects. Okay. Um, so we did the traffic counts and have the consultant on board. We went through a peer review. Um, so when some of the alternatives are more complex, uh, we have another an outside engineering firm look at them. Uh, they've just wrapped that up last month. So the our design consultant is now reviewing those reports, and we should be uh, finalizing those concepts um, by early fall. So we'll do similar to we did with the batch two. We'll do a public input survey to list the the different types of improvements to get feedback on. So public input survey in the fall. Yes, hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Sarah. Next is Fire Chief Edgar. Evening, Mayor Council. Um, I was just going to say eighty-seven thousand dollars and drop the mic, but I figured, <laughs> <laughs> I figured I've got a couple of things that I'd like to share with you. Um, three of our staff members attended the MDA summer camp program, which some of the funds that collected during the boot drive helped fund and send those children to that particular camp, was specific to um, special needs kids. Um, so. We attended that as we have in the past, and they always have a great time and show a true appreciation for what we do. So it's, it's very, a very great camp for the kids. I'd like to thank uh, Council Member uh, Laura Bentley for her assistance with our uh, horse training program. We had many new firefighters that have never even encountered or come face to face with a horse before, so she was able to help us um, kind of calm the nerves a little bit, I should say, and uh, put all our folks through that training as well as assisting us with getting some donations from HAMPS on new halters for all our um, trucks. In the event a horse is loose in the community, we're able to corral that horse and bring it back safely to the homeowner. Um, we had a vacancy in the department we just recently filled with a, a new, female, new female firefighter, Chelsea McDonald. Uh, she's a paramedic, state certified, and she started the fire academy today and will be back out on the street in about 10 weeks. And Jason Howard, our chaplain, um, we spent three days and visited all the firefighters and get to know him and get an opportunity for them to talk to him. So kind of set the groundwork up front for them in case they have any needs for him or want to do a call out for him. So, And the PO has been issued for the final tornado siren for Wood Road and Birmingham Highway. And the final thing I've got is that we've finally completed our purchase if I can get this to come up. Oh, it disappeared. Right there? Okay. This is our um, new ATV for the um, department. It has the capabilities of transporting a patient. You can see the um, stretcher on the back, and that will give us access to Birmingham Park. Um, we've had several calls back there where um, folks have fallen off horses and broken limbs and such, and it's quite the task to carry somebody out of there because our, um, our trucks just simply cannot get back into the park back there. So th this will be able to um, gain easy access. And then you'll see the other um, device that um, Firefighter Gomez is holding there. That is like a wheelbarrow that that stretcher will actually sit on that. It's like a, a wheelbarrow and it sits on there so we can actually get down into some really tight trails to roll the patient out, get them onto the ATV, and then get them up to um, medical so we can go ahead and get that patient transported. And this can also be used for um, special events and such, um, Crab Apple Fest and some of the others, as well as some of the other parks that we have the capability now to transport this by trailer to some other areas in the city that we can use it for. So, and that's all I have. Okay. Any questions for Chief? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you again. Shannon, communications. Last but not least. <laughs> always follow fire, right? So it's tough. Oh, so I will tell you, Mayor and Council, I do have um, a few PowerPoint slides, but they will be brief. We'll go through real quickly. See if they come up. There we are. So as far as email communications, we continue to see um, increases in our open rates and our click rates. Um, our efforts or, or my efforts to continue to encourage residents to seek out information directly from the city um, to make sure that they have the most current and up-to-date information and that they get those, that information from us firsthand continues. Um, so we uh, continue to receive a, a good bit of positive feedback in terms of the content of those emails, specifically the FAQs. Um, and that information that's being shared. 
As far as Twitter, we continue to see growth. It's not about the numbers, though. We talked about that each time. It's more about the interaction and the engagement. So we see good retweets in terms of road construction, road closures, which is very much what um, the platform for Twitter is intended for. Um, and we also are seeing an increase in terms of citizens engaging with us and asking questions, not necessarily specific to public works, but sometimes. Um, we also, in terms of Facebook, continue to see an increase. Um, we have very limited unlikes, even at the lowest point um, in the snapshot at the bottom. Those are, are three um, uh, unlikes. Um, so even then, we average about one per month, which is very low. So I wanted to update you a little bit um, on our paid fireworks campaign. We did something a little bit different this year. Instead of a, a print ad, um, we thought we would try a social media campaign. And so... We went out with a single ad, um, worked with a graphic designer to create a unique graphic. We targeted specifically Milton residents and then pulled that radius out just out around the city limits into the surrounding counties um, and surrounding cities so that we could reach those who might touch um, our um, city um, or some of our farms. And so um, out of that, um, just for the $75 paid boost, um, we reached over 6,000 people um, and we engaged um, about 554 times. Um, those were primarily more women than men, which was interesting. Um, and then out of that, you can see how that breaks down in terms of um, whether they commented or shared. Um, and this is just the paid reach, which I'm about to show you the organic reach, which was um, pretty um, powerful. It certainly isn't um, as good as um, pop fire um, in the news they usually share, but I feel like I've got a great story tonight, so I'm excited. So in terms of organic reach, what do we do? We reached um, almost 795,000 people. Um, so out of that, you can see that most of this was organic reach. Um, and we had a significant number that shared. So over 12,000 times this particular post was shared. Um, and then in terms of campaign comments and the feedback we got, um, our residents thanked us for it. Sometimes they pointed out our shortcomings in terms of they felt that there should have been a focus on animals, small animals as well as um, uh, vets, uh, veterans. Um, and then some said it, um, they did see a, an improvement anecdotally. Others said that they didn't. Um, we reached as far as the UK. Um, we touched a number of states and a lot of that was from our residents sharing. Um, and then um, we also had local um, horse farm or horse owners um, that engaged with us and we even uh, initiated a little bit of positive peer pressure um, with someone tagging foresight county um, to share the post. Out of education and awareness, what I think was so most unique about this is that instead of the city communicating um, the potential hazards for horse owners or equestrian owners, um, you actually had equestrian owners themselves, some living here, some living across the U.S., um, who shared personal stories, and some of them were very impactful. Um, and then in terms of the campaign benefits, it allowed us to interact and engage with our residents about the noise ordinance. Um, about the state law, um, which, was, which was helpful, and even on some unrelated city business. Um, what are the unintended benefits, which I really never anticipated this. I never anticipated that it would reach um, that many people, um, almost 795,000. Um, these are just two snippets, um, but we presented ourselves across the U.S. as Milton as an equestrian-friendly community. And as we look at ways to retain um, our equestrian farms, um, I think we've had an unintended benefit just simply from this campaign that cost us 75 dollars. Um, so I think that's a, a definitely um, a plus. In terms of traditional media, we've held uh, the Milton cover over the last year. I, I've I haven't presented um, in a while, so I, I couldn't remember where we'd actually left off. But we've held the cover for nine weeks. We've had positive fic, um, pickup by some of our print. Television obviously has been um, limited, but typical. It's usually police-specific, noise ordinance, fireworks related. Um, I continue to provide departmental support. I won't read these to you. Um, one of the things sort of tagging on to um, 
um, uh, Chief Austin is that I will be working with the graphic designer to develop a one-page flyer um, that will distribute electronically so that residents have a better understanding of the state fireworks law, how it works with our noise ordinance, um, and maybe what their steps are for how they report it or things to consider before they make the call. So it'll be an educational piece. So we'll work with um, the graphic designer on that, and I'm happy to answer any questions. I just have a comment. I have a comment. Um, so there on on that education piece, I think well, you thank you so much because you can only put something out there if you're willing to respond to all the questions <laughs> that you got. And I know you were responding on the 4th of July and that whole week. So thank you very much for the ongoing commitment to the responses. Um, education, the more information we can give the community about you know, the more commercial firework shows, mm -hmm. that is very valuable, especially mm -hmm. if they're not the days that you think they would be. Right. I will. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, okay. Also, thank you for your, I know, during the holidays or weekends, whatever, <laughs> you're one of the few families where your kids are going, Mom, get off your phone. <laughs> <laughs> that's because they're on their phone, too, so that's good. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anything else from staff? All right, then uh, by, we added by <coughs> motion, uh, or added to our agenda by motion, a second to adjourn into an executive session to discuss land acquisition. Do I have a motion? What's the move to adjourn into executive session? Second. All right, I have a motion from Councilmember Memorial, second from Councilmember Kuntz. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's unanimous. So we'll step back there and discuss land acquisition, and hope we'll be back in a few minutes.
All right, do I have a motion to reconvene? reconvene? So second. moved. Yes. I have a motion and a second to reconvene. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes with four council members, Sudi. Do you need to know their names? No, okay. Okay. All right. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. That passes with four council members. Thank you, guys.